by the term young, I have uh, taken a cutoff age of 30 years, less than well, less than 30 years young. So all my cases will be having uh, an age of onset of their disease less than 30 years. Uh, this is the definition for secondary diabetes, which is either due to uh, destruction of the pancreatic beta cells of genetic or environmental origin or uh, uh, insulin resistance and sometimes a combination of the two. And you can run down the list to see uh, exocrine pancreatic disorders, the endocrinopathies, drugs, and so on and so forth. And, and these are the genetic syndromes, some of which have been covered by Dr. Mihal and Dr. Pandey. Uh, so there will be some overlap. I will uh, try to rush through. Dr. Nihal had taken us through one case of bodied beetle syndrome with a in a boy, and here is a nine-year-old girl with the same bodied beetle syndrome, mental retardation, obesity, uh, diabetes. You can see a tromphosis. He uh, lists of conditions that give rise to secondary diabetes. The genetic syndromes have been covered by almost uh, I say partly fully by Dr. Nihal. So Dr. Nihal shared with us a boy with barred beetle. And here you have a girl with barred beetle. Similar presentation, acanthosis, obesity, mental retardation, uh, postaxial polydactyly. Uh, uh, this is slightly different. So presenting with uh, weight loss, osmotic symptoms, uncontrolled hyperglycemia, and you can see partial ptosis, uh, muscle atrophy, and the typical EMG uh, of, of myotonic dystrophy. This man also had problem with, you know, hypogonadism. Okay. So myotonic dystrophy. Uh, this was the first presentation in the literature of uh, a case of Friedrich's ataxia uh, presenting with diabetic ketoacidosis. Uh, acromegaly presenting with secondary diabetes, so that's endocrinopathy causing diabetes. Typical pituitary pushing presenting with diabetes secondary to insulin resistance. Thyroid disorders, both hyper and hypothyroidism, can give rise to glucose intolerance and diabetes. And uh, here are the prevalence data for you. So in hyperthyroidism, catecholamine excess causing both insulin resistance and insulin secretory defect can give rise to diabetes. But at the same time, the hyperthyroid state accelerates the degradation of insulin and also promotes faster insulin absorption from the intestine, uh, thereby causing hyperthyroid state and, and hyperthyroidism may also come up as a uh, part of a polyglandial autoimmune syndrome. Decreased uh, GLUT4 expression and some polymorphism involved in the D2 gene causing abnormal local T3 production, uh, which impairs glucose disposal, uh, have been touted as the cause of uh, insulin resistance and diabetes in hypothyroidism. FCPD has been discussed in details. I will skip. So this is a typical uh, X-ray picture. Pancreatic uh, calculi, ductal dilatation across L1. Here you can see dilatation already covered. What has not been covered possibly is this. The pancreatic cancer can arise out of fibrocalculus pancreatic diabetes. And uh, here you can see pancreatic cancer, huge mass there in the setting of FCPD. And in this brief communication, we have actually presented uh, data on three such cases of pancreatic carcinoma under our follow-up. Now, here is a patient who presented with you know, superficial thrombophlebitis, uh, which usually uh, gives you a clue as to look for underlying uh, malignancies, mainly pancreatic malignancy. And this patient had developed diabetes uh, all of a sudden. And uh, so diabetes... Presented with diabetes, superficial thrombophlebitis, so which uh, led us to, to think about some pancreatic pathology. We did an image of the pancreas, and here you can see early pancreatic cancer. So in this patient, fortunately enough, an early pancreatic cancer could be detected because of the presentation with diabetes and, and superficial thrombophlebitis, and a complete excision of the pancreatic mass was possible. So that was what was uh, presented here. Uh, thalassemia 
again can give rise to both insulin resistance and insulin secretory defect causing diabetes as you can see in this 20 year old male. But what is interesting here is that if you do an HbA1c, it will not give you any clue as to the kind of hyperglycemia that the patient has because your HbA1c tends to co-elute with hemoglobin F as is the case here. So after seeing hyperglycemia, somebody ordered HbA1c and this was the result. So you cannot really depend on HbA1c to um, look at the degree and duration of uh, glycemic derangement in a patient presenting with diabetes in uh, the background of thalassemia. And if you look carefully across this panel, you can see the variant window where the value you can see is the area under the variant window is so significantly increased, which actually points towards co elution of uh, hemoglobin A1c with hemoglobin F. So here's the data for uh, diabetes in thalassemia, a 10 year study, as you can see, as the years go by, so does the, the prevalence of dysglycemia. Now, diabetes and primary infertility in young males should not forget uh, cystic fibrosis. And uh, again, we presented a uh, published a series of four such cases. And here you can see one of them, 32 years male, male factor infertility, uh, and then a low C-peptide initially managed on glipizide and metformin. Again, HbA1c can be spuriously low in uh, cystic fibrosis related diabetes. So your diagnosis has to depend on an OGTT, which is the gold standard. Uh, the cases can present uh, in a spectrum like normal glucose tolerance, impaired glucose tolerance, then cystic fibrosis related diabetes without or with fasting hyperglycemia and finally full-blown diabetes. Insulin is the main mainstay of treatment. Some of the patients in the early stages of the natural history of the disease in presence of some pancreatic beta cell disease may uh, respond to megalitinide analogs. Uh, MODI has been discussed. So here is one HNF1 uh, beta MODI for you. Then you have uh, a glucokinase. Uh, we now have data on a series of uh, glucokinase positive MODI, which has been recently published by our group. Down syndrome. This is interesting. It can present with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. On the left, you see a Down syndrome with type 1 diabetes, autoantibody positive. On the right, you see uh, Down syndrome with uh, autoantibody negative, acanthosis plus, father having type 2, and this gentleman is having type 2 diabetes. Uh, this has been alluded to by Dr. Nihal, also lipoatrophic diabetes, 14 years girl, primary amenorrhea, you can see BMI of 11, uh, high triglyceride with a low HDL cholesterol, acanthosis, and see pronounced loss of body fat. Even the buttocks lack body fat, for the fat is believed to be usually preserved, a significant lipoatrophy. This uh, thin girl also had evidence of fatty liver and polycystic ovaries. They can also have liver fibrosis, as Professor uh, Nihal already told us. So this is kind of presentation like pseudoacromegaly uh, in the veradinally safe syndrome. Uh, this is another rare presentation of uh, secondary diabetes in young. Uh, here I can see exuberant hair, hirsutism, and characteristically a double row of teeth present here on the lower jaw, which is a typical finding seen with uh, this syndrome, rapson mendon hell, and they have extreme insulin resistance. Uh, this has been discussed, uh, deafness, then you know sensory neural deafness, and then uh, bilateral optic atrophy, blindness, uh, no hypogonadism. Uh, here you can see primary optic atrophy, retinitis pigmentosa, a similar case was uh, shared by Dr. Nihal also. Autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease and diabetes, no DKA. Uh, hypomagnesemia is considered characteristic and some of them have also been associated with elevated uric acid level. 
so this is our experience this is pre covid uh, pre 2018 data actually the numbers have gone up appreciably since then so you can see your uh, secondary diabetes four cases of modi then now it's nine uh, glucocorticoid induced one friedrich satesha then your cushing's five acromegaly uh, lipodystrophy cystic fibrosis as i said it was then one case only but now we have three cases which you have reported bartet biddle syndrome 2 i think that was the last slide so um, thank you for listening